Okay, in this uh, video we're going to look at section 7.2, look at some trigonometric integrals. Uh, before we get into that, I was talking about this handout, this uh, list of formulas that you should know. These are all the basic ones last time. Especially I want to focus your attention to those last three. The integral of tangent comes up a lot, ln of secant. Integral of secant is ln of secant plus tangent and absolute values. This is the one that comes up way too much, but you should probably get, get, get to know this one. Secant cubed, the integral of secant cubed is one half. The secant tangent, now remember secant tangent is the derivative of secant, so maybe you can remember it that way. Plus one half the ln of secant plus tangent, and that's the integral of secant. So that's maybe some way to keep it straight. Anyway, these come up, so you should probably learn, learn those last three. Okay, before we get into the trig integrals, let's talk about something else too. Let's talk about what are called the reduction formulas. We use these a lot as well. The reason why they're called reduction formulas is because we're reducing the powers. Notice, here you have a cosine squared, here you don't have a squared. And so when you're into integrating, it's much easier to integrate this than this, because you can just do this with a u substitution. Same is true with the sine. Well, speaking of which, what is the integral of cosine squared x dx? Well, integral of cosine squared x dx, you, you re use this re uh, reduction formula, move the one half on the outside. So when you integrate, you get um, one half of x, now, before you can integrate cosine of 2x, you need du. du would be 2dx. So if you can just slip a little 2 in there, put a 1 half out here, it's like we call that a baby, sub, a baby u substitution, then this becomes the integral of cosine u, which is u du, which is sine u, right? Or sine 2x, and you get a 1 fourth on the outside. That's, that's the answer. Now, if you had the integral of, of sine squared x dx, since the reduction formula is exactly the same except for a minus sign, would you be too surprised if I told you that you just have a minus sign in between these? So again, it's kind of nice to have those kind of handy as well because they do come up a lot. All right, here we go. Let, let's talk about how to integrate when you have powers of sine and co cosine. You have to, re to remember these, these cases. If you remember why it works, I think that helps a lot, doesn't it? If one of the powers is odd, you would break off that one power, and that's going to be your du. So that, that tells you that everything else, so if du is cosine x, that means u has to be sine x. So you write everything else in terms of sine x, see? Cosine squared can be written as 1 minus sine squared x. And sure enough, u is sine x, du is cosine x. So this, this is essentially u squared times 1 minus u squared du. So when you integrate, you get u to the third over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5 plus c. And make sure you write it back in terms of x. So if one of them's odd, you would do that. If they're both even, it becomes a little messier. If they're both even, you would use the reduction formulas we just talked about. This particular case, you'd use the reduction formula for, for both sine squared and co cosine squared. When you multiply out, you get this. I, I move the 1 fourth out. So when you integrate, this becomes a 1 fourth x, but how do you integrate cosine squared of 2x? You would use the reduction formula on this. Cosine squared 2x is 1 plus cosine of twice this, which is 4x over 2. So you'd move the 1 half out. So when you integrate with a u substitution, integral of 1 is just x and the integral of cosine 4x, you need a 4 in here, so you've got to put a 1 fourth out here, so the coefficient becomes 1 over 32 on the outside there. Final answer, when you combine these two together, you get 1 eighth x minus 1 over 32 sine 4x plus c. Okay, let's take a look at this integral. Uh, you should be a little bit suspicious that maybe we're going to use integration by parts here, because we have a product of two functions. So in that case, wouldn't it make sense to let u equal x? And then dv would have to be everything else. It would be sine, x, sine cubed x dx. So you're going to have to integrate v. How are you going to integrate sine cubed x dx? Well, remember what we just talked about. If the power of, of sine is odd, you could break off a sine of x. And then your sine squared x, you can write in terms of cosine. So you get 1 minus cosine squared is sine x dx. So uh, when you integrate um, this, you're going to integrate this to find v. You're going to make a substitution w equals cosine x and then uh, dw equals negative sine x, right? So what you could do is uh, to get your negative on your sine x, you could flip the order of 1 minus cosine squared x, just call it cosine squared x minus 1. There you go. So this actually fits, fits the, so dv is in fact, when you make this substitution, becomes w squared minus 1 dw, right? There should be a w there. All right, anyway, so what, what, what is v? V would become um, W cubed over 3 minus W. 
which written back in terms of since w is cosine of x, you would get cosine cubed x over 3 minus cosine of x. So what are we doing? We're doing integration by parts. Remember, this is this is v right here. So the integral becomes the integral becomes <coughs> uv. So it becomes x times this quantity, which gives you x cube x uh, cosine cubed x over 3. Uh, minus x cosine of x minus the integral of v du. So you get you get this. Now what do you do here? Well, we we can certainly integrate the cosine. This becomes plus cosine of x, so you get a sine x. So now, <clears throat> how are we going to integrate? Um, how are we going to integrate, integrate cosine cubed of x now? Well, if you make a, a substitution here, uh, cosine cubed of x. Again, since, since the power of cosine is odd. You can pull off a cosine of x, that's your du, and then write cosine squared in terms of sine. So you get 1 minus sine squared cosine of x dx. Make a substitution w equals sine of x, then dw would be cosine of x dx. So you end up with um, 1 minus w squared. That should be a squared, you can't see it much. That's a w squared right there. 1 minus w squared dw. So when you integrate that, you get um, <coughs> w minus w cubed over 3, right? W minus W cubed over 3. And writing it back in terms of sine, you would get sine of x minus sine cubed x over 3. So that, that's where we're going to put right here. When we integrate cosine cubed, we get sine x minus sine cubed x over 3. So when you distribute this negative 1 third, you're going to get minus 1 third sine of x. And when the minus 1 third distributes here, you get plus 1 ninth sine cubed x plus c. We're almost done. Uh, there's only one more step, and that is, I believe you can uh, you can add, you can combine those sine x's, can't you? Sine of x minus one third sine x is just two thirds sine of x. So that's how you do that one. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about powers of uh, tangent and secant now. If um, here is the cases. Suppose tangent has an odd power. If tangent has an odd power, you don't care about secant here. If tangent has an odd power, you pull off a you pull off a, one of the tangents and one of the sec secants. So it makes sense that's going to be your du. Now since tangent was odd, now the power of tangent is even. So now you can write tangent in terms of secant use, using the identity that uh, tan squared um, plus 1 equals secant squared, or rather tan squared equals secant squared minus 1. So there you go. So then u becomes secant, du becomes secant tangent. And you end up something of this form, u squared minus 1 u squared du. So you get this. When you integrate, you get this. Make sure you put plus c and make sure you write it in terms of x. What about if the tangent of secant is even? Well, if the tangent of secant is even, you can pull off a secant squared, and notice it will still be even, right? Right here? So then that makes me think this is going to be your du. So what would u be? u would be tangent of x, and you write the even power of secant in terms of tangent like this, see? u is tangent, du is secant squared, x dx. So you've got a bunch of tangents here, and you have the derivative. So, so it just becomes u squared times u squared plus one du. So when you integrate, you get this, and then when you uh, make sure you substitute back in terms of uh, x. So we talked about what happens if secant has odd power, and before that, what if tangent has odd power? What happens if if secant has an odd power and tangent has an even power? That, that's the only other case. Uh, and, and it turns out, if that's the, if, if you get that, those integrals are usually harder. But but the, the general strategy there is to write everything in terms of secant. All right, because this is tan squared, right? That means you can write this in terms of secant. Tangent squared equals secant squared minus one. So you get this. Now there, what happens here is it turns out everything's in terms of secant. We we know how to integrate secant. We know how to integrate secant squared. And we know how to integrate secant cubed, even though it's kind of a pain, we know how to integrate secant cubed. We actually know how to integrate secant to the fourth. Secant to the fourth is an even power of secant, so that's not hard, actually. So when you get powers of secant, you're just supposed to kind of recognize these integrals. The integral of secant cubed x dx is kind of tricky to do. We did it in class, but you end up with one-half secant tangent plus one-half natural log absolute value of secant tangent. This integral, integral of secant, comes up a lot. That's the natural log absolute value of secant x plus tangent of x plus c. I believe you can combine these middle two, can't you? That's, that's why you get one half secant tangent minus one half ln absolute value of secant x plus tangent of x plus c. 
Alrighty, I guess that's it. We're out of out of stuff. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.